with uh, libertarianprogressive.com. Here's a website that I created, a domain that I bought, um, and uh, there's an idea behind it, basically. Um, and today's date is November 6, 2012. It is Election Day uh, for us here in the U.S. of A. Um, I, want, I want to um, have an explanation, a definition a libertarian progressive dot com. I mean, words sometimes um, are meaningful. Sometimes they're meaningless. But it's a definition that matters. I mean, people can throw out labels like socialism, capitalism, this and that, all these kind of isms. What's the definition? I mean, when you look at the definition, there really is freedom, and then everything else is totalitarianism. Whether it is fascism, communism. You know, and and plutocrats, uh, aristocrats, feudalism. I mean, you name it. Um, and uh, and just kind of go through the plans in, in 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 an overview of 2012 and what we're looking at for 2014. Um, upcoming interviews, um, beating history's vicious circle with knowledge. Um, why is that so important? How do you beat a vicious circle? Um. By knowledge, by memory. Um, how do you have memory? If um, you know, have a good memory bank, um, have a library, be educated, informed. Uh, it's necessary for a democracy to have a fully informed and educated public. And um, so, uh, to not be doomed to repeat history because we've learned from it, um, and we're at a time where. Uh, this knowledge, we can't escape it almost, I mean, because of the Internet. And uh, so it's unprecedented. It's like 10,000 times more powerful than the Library of Alexandria, which people say that if it was never burnt down, we'd probably be exploring the outer reaches of the, and colonizing outer reaches of the solar system by now. Um, but the Internet, anyone can access it, and it is a storage of knowledge. I mean, some of it, of course, needs to be checked out, but it's nonetheless a place where you can use discernment, learn about that. Um, it's a storage of knowledge, and it can help prevent a vicious circle, shine light onto things that are happening, uh, have an informed and educated public. What libertarianprogressive.com is, is mixing this, these two... Uh, Thoughts together, philosophies, united we stand, divided we fall. So we have an intro, issues, points to mention, ideas, resources. Basically, I mean, real quick, the uh, issues, non-divisive issues we the people can agree upon, the big priority issues. There's eight of them here. And if those were solved, believe me, we can argue It'd be nice if the only things that we had left to argue about was education, energy, and health care instead of, number one, our civil liberties. And I'll just read this one, specifically our rights, because this is the first one up here. To be presumed innocent until proven guilty. To not experience illegal searches and seizures of our property, personal records, or persons. Requiring an independent judge's approval under oath. The right not to incriminate oneself if charged with a crime to know the charges, evidence, and accuser, as well as being accountable to a jury of our peers. To have a right to a fair trial, non-expedient yet speedy trial. The right to competent counsel, no cruel and unusual punishment, due process not to be forced to purchase something from a private organization or individual. The right to exercise free speech, not just free speech zones. The right to protect yourself and bear arms, property rights against eminent domain, or being used by the military, posse comitatus, the right to vote, the right to life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, new laws and government should expand, not limit our freedoms. This is where it starts, the solid foundation to allow entrepreneurs, philosophers, and all individuals to thrive and for new ideas to be discovered and born. It gives us the moral high ground and also the confidence in our system and affects us spiritually, mentally, economically, and physically. It is all related and um, it's a culmination of everything. Number two, I mean, so, I mean, that's a big issue there. Um, it's the number one issue. Uh, that's what the Bill of Rights are all about. Um, that's why we, 
you know, had a revolution. Um, that's why we knew what to frame the Constitution with, because thousands have died even before them. I mean, these were rights that have been refined throughout the ages. And the undeclared wars. President Eisenhower warned of a military-industrial complex. I mean, basically, um, the main question is, would you rather be part of an empire or a democratically elected republic? War is a racket. General Smedley Butler would save trillions, and um, we need to have the strongest military. Our biggest threat is our uh, national debt. That's our number one security concern. And we should take care of our veterans, absolutely. Um, and so full health care and, and everything like that, I think. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, compensation, etc. cetera. Um, accountability, transparency, we cannot make informed decisions without the facts, nor have dignity without the right to privacy. We need to be able to observe freely any public servant doing public work via our tax dollars, via video cameras, the media, or as individuals. Unless cameras and other invasive tactics observing us, the citizens, we, the free people, there should be no backroom deals in government. We should have freedom of information to all policies, etc., with a fair and accountable means to protect national security. Laws which are not amended should more than not have a sunset rule. Now, um, that would be great because, you know, that way we might have a lot of useless or actually um, bad laws uh, just expire. Um, I, I mean, it's, some of them we shouldn't have passed in the first place. That's true. And, um, but... Um, uh, but not things like, I don't mean like the Civil Rights Act or anything like that. In fact, I think that should be part of the Constitution. I think one thing that would solve that whole idea for everybody, no matter who you are, um, is to have a simple one-sentence amendment where it says, where it says men, it means all people regardless. And I mean regardless of anything. Um, we need stronger protections for whistleblowers, a means to address grievances about abuses of power. Some rules regarding conflicts of interest, um, regards to a regulator of an industry that one regulates, uh, revolving doors, um, and uh, so accountability and transparency, um, which leads to a level playing field. Stop using the government to repress competition via rules, regulations, conflicts of interest, deregulate small business blockades of needing to certify be to become a barber, hairdresser, and other trades and things like that. Um, not allow states to confiscate property over unpaid property taxes and corporate welfare, special contracts, bailouts, picking winners from losers and losers from winners. Common sense says that's a recipe for disaster if we keep bailing out those who repeatedly fail in the trillions hurting the potential of businesses who might have filled that gap. In other words, small mid-sized businesses subsidizing with their own money via taxes and inflation their incompetent competitors. And, uh, and yeah, it's, I mean, whether you're a Green Party independent, libertarian, you know, I think everyone's pretty pro-small and mid-sized business, right? And, and nothing wrong with big businesses if they get the money voluntarily. Legalize industrial hemp. I'll let you read that if you want, um, but it's a, a second tragedy of the so-called drug wars, industrial hemp currently being illegal. It's illegal to grow. We have to import it. You can buy it at Walmarts and rolls of yarn or whatever, but it's illegal to grow here. All that's imported. Um, so I think it does affect us psychologically, um, knowing something that doesn't even get you high is illegal for because it looks like another plant that does. And even though it, you know, we're subsidizing corn, which is raising the price of ethanol and our food, because about 70% of all food has corn in it, um, when we could get ethanol from uh, hemp at a cheaper price, and etc. Live in a free country, cut the Department of Homeland Security, it's redundant to the FBI, CIA, a lot of, uh, you know, now instead of just a military industrial complex, there's a Homeland Security industrial complex. And, um, you know, big money um, 
get rid of private prisons. Um, plain and simple, uh, uh, they are naturally incentivized and motivated to have more prisoners. And um, prisoners, prisons should be for people who deserve it, rapists, murderers, and people who commit violent acts against others and aggression. Prisoners sh should have clear rights and protections against abuse. There should be no quotas for prosecutors and police. Should be a job well done if crime's actually going down. Fair elections, get rid of electronic voting, at least for a while, so we get it, uh, you know, um, where people have more confidence in it. Um, have an election channel, um, like C-SPAN, like, and uh, with equal time for all qualified candidates, and give all candidates equal time during the debates. Make the effect of money irrelevant or more irrelevant. Perhaps have a none of the above option. Um, or uh, more options for initiative referendums, not letting the party be known on the ballot, just the name of the candidates, maybe score voting, um, and uh, changing some rules and legislative committees, committees if a party has a majority in Congress. Imagine if there's 50-plus independents, et cetera. Audit the Federal Reserve. Um, so basically, that's what... You, you know, are the common issues, but along with that, who's going to champion this? That's why we have candidates. We have interviewed, our goal was to interview 50 plus independent third party candidates who are on the ballot for the Congress of the U.S. of A in 2012. Um, I mean, if you're listening to this and you're from another country and you're like an independent or whatever, I, I would interview you, of course, sure. Um, but this was a goal. The goal was surpassed. Um, and, uh, so we have the most interviews. Here's the biggest compilation of independent third-party candidates. They might not agree with all the issues I have there, but I think most of them do. Here's the interview's main page, 2012 House of Representatives, interviews 1 through 25, 25-plus um, 25 all the way to like 56 Senate and Governor candidate interviews. And here's some other interviews I did with some people like Scott McClarty, the Green Party media coordinator, Adam Kokesh. Dave Ridley from the Ridley Reports, Freedomizer Radio, uh, with proof negative as the host. And so let's just look at the Senate and Governor ones real quick. <laughs> had Joseph Kexel, Dan Cox, Scott Rupert, Andy Horning, John J. Myers, John Barry, Ron Van Devender, Libertarian candidate for Governor, the only Governor I interviewed, Bill Sombrello. Andrew Groff, Heath Beasley, Jack Rooney. My very first interview, um, Chris Borgia, June 15, 2012, independent Senate candidate from Florida. This is Senate and uh, Governor candidate interviews page. <clears throat> and you can see there's the social media sites. It would help a lot if you subscribed, commented, rated them, and etc. Spread the word. Uh, and... <clears throat> House of Representative candidates, one through 25. I mean, people from all across the country, green, independent, libertarians, and more. Ron Williams, Mississippi, District 4. Marcus Lewis, Brian Irving, Paula Bradshaw, Eric Olson, Pat Timmons, Blanca Guerra, Thomas Griffin, Rob Oates, Ursula Rosen, Bill Bloomfield, Anthony, Anthony Grinovich, Joe Ruiz, Ilya Katz, R.J. Harris, Pat Riley, Thomas Jefferson. Here's a person who changed their name to VoteForEddie.com. That's how much they care about the Constitution. District 25, Florida, John Russell, Terry Phillips. He was a media reporter, uh, good space guy in Washington. Um, Ian Mooney in Washington, Adam Steele, Minnesota. Um, Independence Party, U.S. House. Some states have different parties and stuff, um, or they require that if you're an independent. William Drummond, Kalen Fretz, Florida, District 1. And um, so let's look at the House page 2. Dave Harlow, Libertarian, U.S. House, District 10, Ohio. All right, here we go. Craig Allen, Independence. Scott Guesty, Kenneth Hildebrandt. Colin Beaven, Thomas 
Joe Cruz Wiggins, no party affiliation. Jim Clotter, another Floridian. Uh, Martin James Monroe, independent. Iowa. Seth Hollist. Joel Ballum. Stephen Dalgos. Rex Bell, Indiana. Uh, Ed Rankin, Texas, District 30. Steve Porter, Independence, Pennsylvania, District 3. Chip Peterson, Texas. Oklahoma. It's Michael Folks. Um, ben Easton. Danny Bedwell. Eileen Fleming. Howard Switzer. Joe Cobb. Hank Bardell. New York. Uh, Richard Gilmore. Matthew Solido. Um, Libertarian, Texas, Joseph Diaferia, Green, New York, District 16. I mean, this could be your new Congress is what I'm trying to say here. And here's the whole thing. If they have a B next to it, that means they're on the ballot. I mean, now, if these, these videos ever have a problem, you can go to the YouTube page, and you can see all the uh, interviews here. <clears throat> okay, and... Um, Keep going down. There's more. And uh, so um, I just started this about four months ago, four and a half months ago. And um, so we're going to continue in 2014. It's going to be a, maybe a 10-year effort. The goal is, the reason why our goal was 50 interviews, because there's 50 states. It would be a nice thought to think of one representing each state. And uh, this can be your new Congress. All right, and um, so uh, here's a resources list here. Of, here's where I got all the candidate information. And uh, it's gathered right there for you. The easiest way, here's our Twitter page right there. Vimeo, you know, uh, but most of the videos are on YouTube. I put some on Vimeo. Facebook, um, another Facebook. Uh, so... Uh, let's see. So there, there we go. I mean, that's basically. So let's get back to this here. Um, 2014. I mean, I guess they'll continue. It's probably be much better. We'll start earlier. There won't be the distraction of a presidential um, debate as well. So, I mean, I guess please, you know, stand with these ideas. Um, you know, communicate with me. Uh, share ideas. Uh, get the word out. Um, you know, uh, it'd be great. What if we did have 50 plus candidates elected that were not Republicans or Democrats who agreed on those eight issues that I mentioned that I specifically picked? And I specifically try to interview districts where they're the only um, alternate choice, um, where they're the only independent or third party candidates. Uh, not all of them, but about 90% of the interviews are that way. And so I do thank you for the people who have helped um, listen and comment and subscribe, etc. And also definitely the candidates, because without them, none of this would be possible. They're the ones who put themselves in position. If we so choose to, uh, you know, let them be the vessel of least resistance for freedom. Um, in the meantime, I'll do an interview maybe like once a month or something like that. Um, Noam Chomsky, January 11th, 2013 like to get his opinions on different things and so I think that will be motivating and fun and uh, so again beating history's vicious circle with knowledge that's what libertarian progressive about if you keep electing the lesser two evils for too long then you know basically uh, it could equal just one big evil I'm, I'm not even getting into the presidential politics here even though I did just watch the uh, uh, free and equal debate with Gary Johnson versus Jill Stein. That was a lot better than the debates I've seen in last, since Ross Perot, basically. And um, so we're focusing on Congress here. It's less divisive. Most people are set with who they want to be president, I think, even though I think it's still important to reach out because, you know, this does affect us. I mean, not voting is not an answer, um, it, you know, being practical here. I mean, what if we did get 50 people who would, you, you know, get things going in the right direction? And um, so, uh, you, you know, we could end up like 
you know, some tragic Weimar Republic or something like that if uh, if we don't participate. And um, we want a voluntary society and one where that's accountable and that's, um, you know, we respect the commons. And um, so that's the, the closing thoughts here. Um, I hope you have a good election day. And I just wanted to say hello. This is a first kind of me to you uh, presentation made here, but that's basically it. So, I mean, that's how you combine libertarian and progressive. Um, I think the issues that unite are so much stronger than the issues divide. that divide. Remember, Bush had a full House and, uh, and Senate, and so did Obama. In fact, I'm going to end this with, um, I'm going to put right after this, I called into C-SPAN actually today, and it's for about 30 seconds, and I'll leave those final comments for that, but um, just consider all your options and, and, and wonder why they don't allow people who did get enough signatures on the ballot, who have a legitimate statistical chance to win, to not be included um, in all the debates. Some districts do, all right, and, uh, and so momentum is growing. There could be a better year while Congress has a 10% approval rating, and I mean, it, like I was mentioning with Bush, I mean, and Obama, I mean, each time they were elected, they had a full Congress to work with of the same party, and that's almost unprecedented, um, except for late. And uh, so if they they can't do anything while they have a full Congress, I mean, people are just sick of it. And um, so please check out libertarianprogressive.com. Uh, spread the word. Um, uh, participate in our social media sites. These things here. And um, <clears throat> thank you for your time. And uh, I hope you have a great day. Again, hi Thomas. Hey. Yes, hi. I'm a registered Republican. I um, registered, uh, you, you know, to support Ron Paul. Um, became the creator of libertarianprogressive.com where I've interviewed more independent third party candidates than anywhere for 2012 who are on the ballot libertarianprogressive.com but Obama had a full house and senate just like Bush did um, their first two years and then immediately the American people rejected that they've gotten to the point where the Gallup poll has them at 10 percent approval ratings um, there's not a better time to, you, you know, have a political revolution. That means electing libertarians, Green Party, independent, and it's anyone but um, a regressive kin or a, uh, uh, a dingle crap. Um, and uh, so, I, and also, I did have a question: is, is Brian Lamb still hosting? Because I haven't seen him in a while. But um, I don't see the difference between the two. And Gary Johnson, he's the most qualified. He's a governor for two terms, and he um, was in a state that was two-to-one Democrat. And so I'll be looking forward to those debates uh, later today um, with him and Jill Stein. Thank you very much. And Thomas, I can answer one of those questions. Brian Lamb is still hosting Q&A. Uh, Linda Feldman, since our caller brought up the change, the shift in Congress. <laughs>